Hey everyone, I'm Tony Florida, a developer advocate with Linode, and in this video, which is part of a larger series, we're going to be taking the Django Hello World application that we worked on last time, expanding upon it by adding an HTML form, which accepts user input, and taking that input data and passing it to another page on our website. There's a bit of coding that we have to get through, so let's get right on into it. All right, just like last time, I want you guys to start by logging into your Linode web server via SSH and navigating to the var www Django app directory. In here, we'll mostly be working in the stocks web app. So let's go ahead and actually move into that directory. And the first thing I'm gonna do is to create a file called index.html. Now I'm gonna paste in some code here, some mostly HTML code. And if you're familiar with HTML, you'll see that for the most part, this looks normal, except for line nine and 10 here. And this is actually where the power of Django comes into the picture. And this allows us to send data from the Django backend to the user interface via this type of syntax right here. So this first line, we won't worry about too much. This is just a security feature that is built into Django that you are required to use when you're working with an HTML form element. And the second line here is, um, well, we're gonna soon define a form element and input that we will insert into this HTML page dynamically. Okay, so just keep that in mind. This is where the output of that is going to appear. But before we do that, there is one other input element here, which is a submit button. And when we click on that submit button, we'll be taken to the stocks web page. Okay, so let's save this file and create a new file called forms.py. Now, like I said, this is where we're going to define that form input element. And basically what we're doing here is we are creating a class called ticker form, and that could be called whatever you want. And we're creating one input element. It's a character field, which is basically just the ability for a user to enter a string of characters. It's gonna have a label called ticker, and it has a max length of five characters. Okay, so let's actually do something with that ticker form, and we'll do something with that ticker form in the views.py file. And if you remember from last time, this was a very, very simple, um, you know, just printing out on the screen, hello world, you're at the stocks page. Let's make it a little bit more sophisticated. And I'm gonna go through line by line here, and we'll uh, rearrange this to a point that uh, we can start using that ticker form. So I'm gonna get rid of this import because we won't need it anymore and replace it with a render. And I'm gonna also import the ticker form that we just created, clean this up a little bit. And then down here, we'll keep the same structure. We have an index um, that accepts a request, but we're gonna remove the HTTP response and we're gonna replace that with two additional lines of code here, which is going to be one line instantiating our ticker form and the second line rendering our request for the index.html page, which we just created. And inside there, if you remember, we called our um, our element in their form. And that's where we're gonna pass in that extra input element to our index.html page. So that's great. Let's go ahead and save that. And we're actually almost very close to being able to test this out, but there's one other thing that we have to add, and that's back down here in the Django application settings file for our project. And if we go down here and look for something called DERS, you can see that down here on line 57, we need to tell Django where our new HTML file exists, okay? So you're seeing that we're working with templates here. These are Django templates. We just need to tell, them, tell Django the path to that template. So for us, it's at var www Django app stocks. So it's gonna basically look in that directory for any HTML templates that we have defined. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we can start our server back up on port 8001. So if you remember, we can do that with Python 3 manage.py uh, run server and then 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 colon 8001. So that will start our server back up. And if we go here and refresh the page, you'll see that we now have a single form with two input elements, one here and one submit button. 
and like you can see here, you can type something in, you can, um, this will be a stock trading, um, not a stock trading, but a stock app. So let's type in a ticker here. And as you would guess, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna take us back to that same page. So let's actually do something with that user input data. And we can do that by going into our stocks web app and editing the views.py file. And instead of like before what we were doing, just instantiating the ticker form, I'm gonna add in a few lines of code here, which is just an if statement. And um, we're gonna get rid of the ticker form instantiation. So basically this is what we were doing before, but now we're gonna first check to see if the request that's being passed in is a post request. And if it is, we're gonna instantiate the ticker form with that data that the user entered. And we're just gonna do a basic check to see if the form is valid, that's a built-in check. And if it is, then we're gonna take, we're, we're gonna extract whatever the user input it into that box and in the field ticker, the ticker field, and assign it to a variable called ticker. And then we're gonna redirect it to a sub directory, another page on our website named that ticker symbol. Okay, so right now we're at the IP address colon 8001 slash stocks. If somebody types in Apple AAPL, we're gonna go to the same exact URL slash stocks slash AAPL. That's what this HTTP response redirect does. And actually in order for that to work, we have to add one more input here, which I'm gonna copy and paste over here and just clean that up a little bit. And th this is actually gonna break, but I wanted to show you guys what's happening. And I do wanna show you what um, a Django error message looks like. So we'll go ahead and save that and let's start up our web server. So that's the same as before. We'll go back into our main directory of our project, type in Python three manage.py run server 0 .0 0.0.0.0 colon 8001, hit enter. Our web server is running, and now let's come back to our web browser, refresh the page, and that looks good. So let's type in Apple, A-A-P-L, hit submit, and we are redirected to that subdirectory, a page named Apple, A-A-P-L, but this is telling us, Django is telling us that this page was not found. It checked under all of the known URLs, and this might look familiar from the last video, and it couldn't find it. So let's do that next. Let's design what that URL looks like, define the functionality of that page, and tell Django that it exists. We can do that in the stocks web app directory. And in here, just like we did with the index page, let's make another HTML page called ticker.html. And I'm gonna paste in some code here. And just like before, this is very similar. Um, we have mostly HTML code with the Django syntax with the double curly brackets here with the ticker variable, which we are yet to define. So let's go ahead and define the ticker variable in the views.py file. You can probably see a pattern here with how this, this works as far as Django passing data from the back end to the front end. Um, I'm gonna copy some code here and we're gonna define a another view called ticker. And this time the ticker view is gonna take in a request as well as a ticker ID, TID here. Okay, and I'm gonna show you in a second where we get that from. It's a really cool feature that Django has, but just remember that we're calling it TID, ticker ID. And um, the next few lines of code here, we're just defining an empty dictionary key value pair, and we're inserting into that um, a name ticker and the value being whatever that is for ticker ID, TID. And then just like we do for index up here, we're gonna render the request to the ticker.html page, which we just created, and pass in that context, which includes the, the variable ticker. Okay, so let's save that page. And the final thing we have to do is tell Django that this URL exists. So we actually do that, uh, we should have stayed back in the stocks directory. So let's edit the URLs file here. And we have our URL pattern for the index page. So let's add one for the views page. And just so we don't screw up the syntax, I'm gonna copy and paste this. And this is where some of the magic happens, okay? So before with the index page, we were looking at the relative URL. Um, at the parent level, if you remember from the last video, we have our urls.py file in the Django app directory, and that defines our, you know, our slash stocks subdirectory. Um, so that's why we sh this, this view shows up at that level. 
but here we're defining a subdirectory at the ticker level and that's where the ticker ID comes into play. So it's it's basically looking for a string after slash docs. Anything that comes after slash docs slash, it's gonna take that value and assign it to a variable called ticker ID. And then when that page is loaded, we're gonna call that ticker function from the views.py file and then pass that data all the way from the URL down into the user interface on that page. And that's where we make that link to the views.py file. Okay, so I think we're ready to go ahead and test this out. Fingers crossed that everything's in place for it to work. Let's go back to our main project level here, run Python 3 manage.py run server run ser server 0.0.0.0 colon 8001 hit enter and we have one syntax error here and this is probably good for you to see because we'll show you how to um, fix this so it's in their urls file so let's go into stocks urls and i have an inkling of what it is and yep Right, it's we're missing a comma here. Let's go ahead and save that and rerun. Okay, we're good to go. So let's come back here, start off at our stocks page, type in a ticker symbol. Let's stick with Apple, A A P L, submit, and very good. This is exactly what we want to see. It is redirected to the stocks Apple subdirectory, and it is just showing that element whatever we passed in on the page as an h1 element and what's what's really cool like we can try it again we can do something else like google submit and it's uh it's the same type of thing and what i really like about this is you can go the opposite way right you can type in into the url um what's another ticker symbol like ford which is just an f you can do that and it'll resolve that page to just show the f element that you passed in all right, so as always, let's get out of the web server and do a git status to see what files we have changed. Let's do a git add-u to add the changes to the files that we have previously configured. And if we do a git status again, you can see that the modified files have been added to, or they're ready to be committed. And now these are our new files, so we can individually add them either by doing git add stocks forms, stocks, index stocks ticker or we could have did a git add period to add them all directly so if we do git status again we'll see that we have six files to be committed let's do our git commit dash m add it a html add it in html form that accepts user input and passes it to a another page okay and then finally git push origin master to push our code changes up to our gitlab server in the next video we'll be integrating a finance api into our django web application taking our user input data to query the api and retrieve some stock market price data and displaying that on the screen for the user so check that out thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one